of us, uh, we sing about God's amazing grace. And uh, we enjoy songs about the grace of God. We even like to talk, talk about the grace of God. But I think it will benefit all of us if we just explore God's word a little bit more and understand, get a grip, a better grip on the grace of God and learn how to appropriate that grace in our lives. And this morning, just as an introduction, I want to touch on, a few, uh, on several different things. There may be isolated thoughts, but they, these are things we're going to delve in uh, to greater depth in uh, the weeks to come as we talk about God's amazing grace. You know, our God is a gracious God. I mean, He's very, very gracious. There is no limits to the grace of God. Amen? The Old Testament, in fact, in the book of Exodus, the 34th chapter, the 6th verse, it says, The Lord passed before Moses and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering, and abounding in goodness and truth. God is merciful and gracious. He is a gracious God. In fact, the Bible says in 1 Peter 5, verse 10, it says, He's the God of all grace. God of all grace. And not only is a gracious God, but He's also God who gives or imparts that grace or endows us with that grace. It says there in James 4, 6, but He gives more grace. He gives more grace. So if you and I, in case you and I feel like, you know, I really need more grace. Well, God is ready to give you more grace. He gives more grace. Amen. He is so gracious that He's ready to impart more grace than what you and I have experienced till now. More, more grace. It's up to you and me to say, God, I just want more grace in my life. There's no limit to His grace. But what is grace? When we talk about God's grace or God's amazing grace, what are we talking about? In the Bible, in the Old and the New Testament, grace is used in three different contexts. One, grace talks about divine favor. God's divine favor. We'll explain that a little bit. Second, it talks about God's empowerment, divine empowerment, or divine enablement that comes upon a person, comes upon your life and my life. And then grace also is used in the context of divine character, that there's the expression of who God is, God's character, His virtues. So grace is used in these three different contexts in both the Old and New Testament. So let's just examine them a little bit. You know, when it talks about divine favor, God's grace as divine favor. It's talking about God being uh, gracious to us, showing favor to us, pardoning our sins, being merciful to us in our wrongdoing, giving us or doing things for us which often is unexpected and many times undeserved. He's being gracious to us, generous, to us. And also talks about us being acceptable or accepted in his eyes. Divine favor. All of this is wrapped up in divine favor. God's grace as divine favor. Just God accepting us as we are. Finding favor in his eyes. Like it talks about Noah. Noah was a man who found grace in the sight of the Lord. He found acceptance. He was accepted in the sight of God. Now the a very important truth that you and I must keep in our hearts is that as believers, we are standing in grace. Or we are in a position of grace. Romans chapter 5, verse 1 and 2 says, you know, we've been justified freely uh, through faith in Jesus Christ. And we have now come in to this grace in which we stand. So we are in a position of grace. This grace in which we stand. The Lord Jesus has ushered you into a position of grace before God. 
which means you relating to God is now based on His grace. Amen? God is gracious. We must learn to relate to Him based on His grace. See, many of us, we tend to relate to God based on uh, a religious God that we have an idea of or we think or imagine. He's a religious God. He's a God of rules. He's a God of do's and don'ts, thou shalt and thou shalt not. And so we tend to relate to God as a thou shalt and a thou shalt not God. But we need to change that. And learn to relate to God as a God of grace. Because you, are, you and I are positioned before God in a place of grace. Amen. Are we together on that? Do we all understand that? He's a gracious God. And you've been ushered in. We are standing before Him in grace. And when He looks at you, He is looking at you with all grace. He's a gracious God. He's looking at you with divine favor. You're accepted in His eyes. There's nothing that you can do to be more accepted before God because you're already in a position of acceptance. So now we learn, need to learn to relate to Him based on His grace, not based on thou shalt, thou shalt and thou shalt not. Not based on religious works, but based on His grace. So God relates to us out of His grace, accepting us, doing things for us, giving things to us which we may not expect and which we do not deserve. The second dimension of His grace is divine enablement or divine empowerment, which is God just releasing empowerment into your life to help you do and become things that you could not do and become on your own ability. That's divine empowerment. For example, Paul says this in 1 Corinthians 3 verse 10. He says, according to the grace that was given to me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and somebody else builds on it. So he says, look, what I'm doing in ministry, I'm doing it according to the grace that was given to me. According to what God endowed me with, according to what God put upon my life. In Ephesians 3 verse 7, he says, I became a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given to me by the effective working of His power. I became a minister by the gift of God's grace. So ministry or serving God is really an outworking of His grace in our lives. Amen? Amen. So when somebody looks at, you know, you look at somebody and say, you know, how could that person be doing what he's doing? Well, it's an outworking of the grace of God. God has graced his life that way or her life that way. And that's how that person is able to do what he or she is doing. Because of the grace of God. On that person's life. Amen. So grace is divine empowerment. It's divine enable, enablement and empowering. 1 Corinthians 15.10, Paul says this. And he says, I am what I am by the grace of God. And His grace toward me was not in vain. I labored more than the others, more than the other apostles. And yet and I, but it was the grace of God which was working in me. And even the gifts of the Spirit, they are actually gifts of grace. In 1 Corinthians 12 verse 4, it says, there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different gifts, talking about the gifts of the Spirit, but the same Spirit. The word gifts there is charisma. The root word is charis, which is the Greek for grace. So there are different gifts, charisma, gifts of grace. Charismata, gifts of grace. That's where we get the New Testament, or the English word, Charismatic. So when you say charismatic, what do you mean? Well, let's talk about the English word automatic. What do you mean when you say automatic? It means it operates on its own. 